Pick Sales National Football Show. Please hit the like button. You guys were great. I appreciate that. And yeah, you have to understand something about my relationship with Butch Davis. Um, yeah, man, I wasn't in a good place in my life when I went to Miami. I'd just been thrown out of Maryland. And my aunt will hate when I say this. I threw a guy out of a window. Out of a first story building. And there weren't a lot of schools that were going to give Dan Cilio a chance to have a scholarship after throwing a guy out of a window. I was a very angry kid back in the day, man. I'm, hey, I'm more of a pacifist now. <laughs> but, hey, first question I got when I got down to Miami goes, you threw a guy out of a window? He goes, why? I go, this is really the stupidest thing of all time. I was talking to a guy's girl. Of course. And the guy goes, that's my girlfriend. I went, well, not tonight. She's not. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> Big Sills wasn't really, um, well, <laughs> I wasn't, I guess like the show, I wasn't for the faint of heart. <laughs> what did the guy say? He really didn't say anything. He just put his hands on me and I threw him and his three buddies out the <laughs> and Bobby Ross from Maryland threw me out for that. My aunt, my grandmother went up and cried for me, but I did throw a couple guys out of a window. I don't, not proud of it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not proud of it, but um, all right, let's move on. Let's move on to Xander Krause here. Part of the birds, three sixty five in the morning, him and Johnny do a great job, Johnny Mac. And boy, I'll tell you what, when I was listening this morning, man, Wow, that organized team practice, man. The the, the 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 pass rush showed up. I was like, damn, okay, that was all good there, man. How you doing there, Xander? Big sales. Good to be here, brother. I missed uh, most of the beginning of the show here, so you're gonna have to give me a a fast a fast right. recap, a fast synopsis of where Big Sills' mind has been today. Okay, well, do you think you're gonna get more out of the formaldehyde jar, um, petri dish, joint practice that you had on Tuesday? Or do you think you're going to get more of what you're going to be looking at in a game tempo type situation with your defense tomorrow night? I think the petri dish will win out. <laughs> the petri dish wins out. <laughs> I, I do. I, I don't think they're going to play these starters tomorrow. No, man. I that think you're going to play the defensive guys. We'll see. I mean, I think you're – yeah, I think that, I think it's a little bit different with the defensive guys, with, with Vic Fangio, but I, I don't know. Who are you thinking? Everybody? Oh, I think they're going to play Huff and Smith. I don't know how many times they're going to play Jalen Carter in there, but, dude, yeah, you got to find think, your linebacking core. Yeah. Uh, look, I think all the linebackers should play, no doubt. I mean, look, if you're a starter or you're Jalen Carter or – even Bryce Huff. I mean, you know, we have questions on him, but he's going to be the starting edge rusher. Oh yes. You know, if 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 you're one of those guys and you're and you're proven and you're locked in, then I agree. They they probably don't need to take the field. If you're the linebacking core and there's six of you rotating right now through the first twelve practices, no doubt about it. But I think Nicobe Dean's made now is is now making the push to the first team. He's been more instinctive than the other guys. And look, that matters in linebacking. From the formaldehyde jar, okay. Yeah, I mean, look, we'll see. He looked good in the preseason game. He looked solid out there. I know he wasn't playing versus the top guys, but he he did look okay out there. And I think Trotter Jr. is emerging fast. I mean, John's not ready to say he's going to be the starter yet, but he keeps saying by week six, and I'm like – No way, week six. I want to see him tomorrow night. If he makes a push tomorrow night, Xander, yeah. and he looks better, I'm getting him reps in that Packer game. I'm with you. I'm with you, no doubt about it. Uh, so we'll see what they end up doing. But, yeah, you're right. Maybe those guys will play. Okay, well, let's do this so far. With with the joint practice and what you saw last week against the Ravens, let me let me put – are you still willing to say this or have you upgraded this take? Because here's mine still. Questionable edge rushers. Your defensive tackles, in my opinion, are maybe the best young duo of young tackles that you have in the league. I mean, especially in the NFC, Xander. Yeah. Your linebacking core is not very good. And if you're going to rely, Xander, on your safety position to be this as of now, an injured Avante Maddox and an injured C.J. Garner and, and Reed Blankenship, an older 
corner and a questionable guy who hasn't played in a year in youth over on the other side, that's who you are. Are you willing to upgrade, or do you think that's still your question marks on where you are right now as a defense? I feel a little bit better about the defensive line. <clears throat> I know I still have questions on the edge, but I think as a unit, they're going to be tough to deal with. You heard them. They they kind of throttled the Patriots around that offensive line. There was one they're guy. They're a two-win team, though, dude. Yeah, but they're still NFL guys. So, I, 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 I get that. I, I, I really do, but that's like the third worst. And listen, I think those reps were important for Trotter, for Quinion, for uh, guys like that who hadn't seen game action. But, dude, to put that in perspective, to get pass rushes versus the worst OTs. No, I know. You're, you want to compare yourself with the best, not with the worst. And, and yeah, I, well, yeah, like the Packers. Yeah, for, look, I understand it, but you can only you can only play I, who's in front of you, and they throttled them. So that's you know, why. Well, that, wait a minute. We'll see if they throttle them tomorrow night in the game. Well, they're not going to play at all. Okay, so you're really comfortable with a? I'm not comfortable. With I would enjoy it with, with a joint controlled practice versus a game scenario where you're communicating on the field. Remember something also in this here, Xander. When you're in a joint practice. You get to stop the play and coach. When you're in a game tomorrow night, there's no coaching. That coaching comes the next day. You don't get a chance to stop and go, you missed that technique. The technique is right with your right, right foot forward, and when the guard pulls, you got to get flat down on them. You can't do that on Thursday night. You yeah. got to play the next play. So I want to see how they look as a unit tomorrow night. Yeah, look, my, my point is, back to the question, though, I do believe that that defensive line might be a little bit better than we're thinking when you add in all components together. I don't think you have, you know, I think the sum of its parts is what will make it great. Bryce Huff's going to have going to have space off the edge. You know why? Because they got to deal with Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter, and Milton Williams in the middle. That's going to eat up three, four offensive linemen right there. You know, so I think that's what's going to be hard to deal with from all the other positions, though that you pointed out. I think the safety is a big concern. I don't feel um, – I don't know why, but I don't feel concerned about the cornerbacks. I just feel like you have good talent there that's going to turn the corner at some point this year. I don't think they're going to be our Achilles heel. Uh, the linebackers are tough. I mean, I don't know what to – I don't Would know you rather have talent or experience a corner? Well, I think you have the you, – you know, the fusion of the two will be our ideal world. And but you don't have that. experience at the corner. You have only one corner with experience. Right, so you have Slay and you have Quinion. It's the tale of two. It's you have the third, twelve-year veteran and the and the rookie. You know, and remember something about Isaiah. He didn't get a lot of snaps over there at corner. No, he was he a special but he team was good. Player. But yeah, he didn't. You're right. Okay, so Mister International calls me out. He says that's a political answer. <laughs> <laughs> you guys think Shipley could get more reps at the slot? His hands are better than Anus, <laughs> and he's faster. Than any Wilson, I'll, I'll say this: I don't. I think anybody who gets uh, reps in the slot, I think it'll be Devonte or AJ. I don't. I and it'll be the third wide receiver. By the way, I think they make a move there, wide receiver three, Sander. I, I I don't think you have the guy in the team now. Again, I don't think it's a big move, but I think it's going to be looking for a competent move. I do. Not, what do you feel confident with, Paris Campbell? Yeah. Well, here's the problem, and, I, and I've been debating this with John, talking about it with John. There's two things you have to solve with the wide receiver three. One, you need a guy that can play the slot or can, can be the, the third wide receiver that's going to get two, three targets a game maybe, right? 30 to 40 targets on the year. I think that's right about what it's going to be when yeah. you have guys like Devontae, AJ. There were Gallagher. 35 catches total last year there. Exactly. So I think that's where it is. So you know, In that role, you know, I think Paris Campbell, Johnny Wilson, Covey, I think they're okay for that. I think where you have the issue is the backup wide out. Now, if, if AJ goes down, if Devontae goes down, are you putting Johnny Wilson on the outside? Are you, you know, and, and that's what John keeps bringing up that you need more depth for that reason. And you're trying to kind of thread the needle with a guy that can do both, who can play wide receiver three and play the outside, but they don't necessarily have that right now. And I think, I, I don't, here's my problem. I, you think they're going to send a draft pick for a guy that gets 30 targets a year? No. So where are I they going? Wait for a cut. Wait for a cut. I mean, you, there's guys out there. Juju yeah, no, Smith there'll Schuster. be somebody cut. Yeah, Juju Smith-Schuster. I think he's out there. I forget who else. There's a couple other guys that are out there that maybe, Hunter Renfro. maybe they would. Yeah, Hunter Renfro. You know, he's a slot-only guy. He's not playing any outside. But 
Yeah, maybe. I mean, look, we'll see. I, I don't think how he could. He could for sure. He's done it in the past. Man, you remember a couple of years ago he signed Steven Nelson. That was like August 28th. Even when he got Bradbury, it was late in August. So he he's still looking, I'm sure. I just don't know if that would be the position he would make the move at when you consider that the offense is stacked. The defense is the one that needs more help. Oh, absolutely. You know, there was a couple comments made about Kellen and um, Jalen today. I want to get your opinion on. And by the way, Jason Kelsey was on a podcast. I want to throw some of the things off of you and see if you think that they've been rectified here. And let me get what Slay's comment was, because I thought it was really interesting. And this goes to our point, and sometimes when you and I uh, go back and forth on this here with the organization, Slay said this, that Kellen Moore is making Jalen Hurts a smarter ball player. And he said it, he goes, you can see it every day. He's becoming a smarter and smarter ball player. How can you go from one extreme, Xander, where you didn't help your quarterback at all get better to now you've got a guy in the building that you're hearing people say it's so noticeable that Hertz is doing things that he's never done, even under Shane Steichen, that you, you, you may turn out to be right, Xander, that this is the perfect fit because if you're hearing this smarter, he sees the landmarks in the secondary better. <clears throat> he's reading the defenses better. You gotta tell you, man, why haven't you done this from day one? Sills, he's now in a pro style offense, too. You forgot the biggest part of it. He's I now in a pro style offense where we technically Sills, we technically, and I know you're you're not gonna be a fan of this comment, but this is the truth. We technically don't know what the ceiling of Jalen Hurts is yet. We saw him at his best in 22 in an offense that was here today and gone tomorrow. It was an RPO-based offense, and it's not sustainable in the NFL for a 5, 10, 12-year career. And now you have Kellen Moore, who has Jalen Hurts running a more traditional style of offense. I'm not sure, by the way, if you caught – who was it? Lane Johnson and Jordan Mailata on the Green Light podcast uh -uh. With, with Chris Long. So Jordan Mailata went in depth about Kellen Moore and how he's created opportunity for Jalen Hurts to read and pick up blitzes and defensive coverages easier. Now I don't, I'm not smart enough to know what, to what exactly that means. For I don't landmarks. know. The, I don't know the playbooks. I don't understand. Andrew McKee said it the other day, Xander, right. that you know when you see the motion, the motion creates those landmarks for the quarterback to see. And he said it at the press conference, which is what we debated. I debated I John on this exact thing. John told me I was crazy. Lane Johnson's telling you the same thing I'm telling you because, and when Tanner was telling you too, he moves that motion over so that the quarterback can see his key. Free comes over, strong comes down, linebacker gets with. Those are all landmarks for you to know pre snap read right. where you're going to throw the ball, which is arguably Jalen's biggest deficiency to this to date. You know, everybody gets mad at some of the the you know the rollouts and things that Jalen didn't do well last year. Well, a lot of that is compounded by you know him struggling to pick up the blitz and read the defense. Now, if if he knows that, and now you have a coach that has him in a pro style offense, and you have a quarterback that's willing to work the way Jalen Hurts has proven he's willing to work. I mean, look, I've been saying it all summer. I I think this could be a scary good version of Jalen Hurts and. It could just be getting started. He could be getting better and better and better. And and the ceiling that we once envisioned for Jalen Hurts could essentially be shattered because we were expecting an RPO quarterback for life. Now you got him in, an, in a pro style. He still has the benefit of the legs. He still has all of the other things he has in his skill set. And you're going to pick, have him get better at reading defenses, get better in, in pocket awareness and pocket presence. I mean, this is a quarterback that could really take a big stride for it. I'm not saying he's gonna. He has to do it, but the 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 table is set for him to really take off this year. And that's why, boy, I hope they can figure out a way to keep Kellen Moore here because if it does work like we're like I'm laying out, like I think it, I'm hoping it will. Kellen Moore is going to be a hot commodity, and you're not going to want to let him go. I wouldn't want to let him go. So you're saying that, Jalen, you think you envision him being a better version of Dak who protects the ball more? Well, I'm saying this is going to be our first Dak throws for about 4,400 a year and 33 touchdowns. 
I love Prince. Prince, Prince was hilarious this Prince morning. Prince is a dick. He said, read my <laughs> super chat, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Xander, you sound like him. LOL. Preach. Thank you, Prince. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, he was You're on right. break. Prince this kissed morning. my <laughs> ass. He was kicking John's ass this morning, too. It's not just you. <laughs> Prince takes no prisoners. Uh, but look, I think it's going to be a great thing. I don't know if I would say I think he's going to be Dak. I just think he's going to be a different version of Jalen this year, a version we haven't seen yet. And I think he's got the right coach to do it. A guy that no, has had two number one offenses in a short tenure, five or six year career as offensive coordinator, whatever it's been. And I think this guy's, I think, I think he could match up with Jalen, understand that skill set, and really take it to the next level. I'm, op, I'm optimistic. I know, I know that. I'm being an optimist. I understand that. He has to do it still. But when you think about the change that Jalen Hurts has made and what you've seen from camp and him taking the underneath stuff, you know. He Sills, I know you have your gripes with him as a quarterback and the style and everything, but this could be a guy that really turns into a tremendous football player. I want to say one thing about a comment that I did hear John McMullen make. John McMullen made a comment about they want to see Jalen. He'd like to see Jalen throw, you know, explosion, more explosion plays down the field. And I'm like, wait a minute. There's a guy in New England. That is the all-time leading passer in yards, postseason and regular season, and has six rings, seven total, by checkdowns. It's not about explosion plays. You know what it is? It's about high percentage plays that win Super Bowls. And on top of that, Xander, here's what John wants. Say you start a series out. You run the ball a couple times, get a couple first downs, and all of a sudden you try for a home run on first down. Then you're second and ten. Barkley gets knocked behind the line of scrimmage or gains two yards. You're, you're third and eight. You punt. You give the ball back to Jordan Love on his 40-yard line because you punted the ball. That's not what that defense needs in September. That defense needs a controlled offense, Time of possession. in my opinion, yeah. to be able to get that thing to right by week eight, nine, ten, somewhere in there. You can't afford deep passes early on in the year. I'm not saying don't take shots. Yeah. But I'm saying you need to have ball control. You need to have time and possession and field position to save that defense while it gets reps, gets more mature, yeah. more playing time. Don't force feed it like you did last year because you know what? The defense never matured. Yeah. You know, it's one of those things where you have the conversation and then you think back on the conversation and you're like, damn, why didn't I think of that? Cause that's such a good point. And I wasn't, I, it wasn't really a debate between John and I, it was more of him explaining that he doesn't want to see them completely neuter Jalen hurts and not, and take away, you know, part of what made hurts great was everything closes down around him. He can sneak outside the pocket and make a deep throw, and you can't you can't quantify that, right? You can't you can't measure that. And I think Jay, John's concern was more with, are they going to check it down so much that Jalen doesn't do any of that? And that's his concern. But when you when when you say that, you're correct. I mean, do you what do you, what would you rather have? Those plays here and there, or a consistent offense that can take you all the way? You and, know, and, and I think and that's my defense at 55 reps instead of 70 reps. Exactly. That's that would be huge. That's so important too. With a defense this young and this, you know, questionable, that is so important. So it's a good point. I mean, it's one of those things I wish I said to John in the moment where, you know, you got to control the clock like you just laid out. And this is the best way to do it. Keep your offense on the field. And like you said, you want big plays or you want high percentage plays. High percentage plays is how Brady made his money. High you know? percentage plays is low turnover plays. True. Now I don't think Jalen has a turnover problem. I did, you know, he did last year, but he because they were tough throws. Yeah, he was throwing the long ball all Look, over. The get place. this. I've never seen a quarterback. Okay, Jalen Hurts is the only quarterback I've ever seen complete for 3,800 mm -hmm. yards with no check down game and no screen game. And I've I've never seen that. All you're asking them to do is throw 15 ins and outs. And they didn't throw across the middle of the field. So Xander, if I'm putting a if I'm putting a banjo defense or I'm putting a nickel defense package, defend the numbers. He won't go to the middle of the field. Tight ends out. Uh, you you're you're asking him, and you're creating such tough passes for him. That's why when people go like this to me and they say, "Does it really matter who wide receiver three is?" Yes, 
everybody has to be an option for it to work. You can't go into a game, Xander, 10 versus 11, and just innate that. That yeah. position has to have some quality to it. Like you said, not volume, but it has to have quality to it. That a defender and a key coordinator goes, you know, they do run a jet sweep out of this. That guy coming out of the slot, whipping around the corner. You want to be able to go and have something to defend. That's why the offense that he's putting out there, the thing that I've been impressed with, Kellen, is that everyone's an option. No, okay? no doubt. Everyone's no doubt an about option. That. And I and think that's created good for really a lot of good things there. Yeah, I think that's a good thing for Jalen, by the way. But no, what you just laid out is is spot on. That's big sills at his best, everybody, laying it out for you, how football is played and, and how to how to do it, do it the right way. That's good stuff. But look, I mean, you see what I'm saying with the upside oh, yes. of hurt, right? Yep. I mean, I I my I do have some fears that you know, maybe maybe with the, with his style, you know, I know check down Charlie worked for Tom Brady, but will it work for a guy like Jalen who it has a different skill set? Mahomes. I know, and that's where but I'm you, like, you I'm wrong. What, I'm, I'm fine when to you be have wrong. Devante, though, Xander, watch this. When you have Devontae Smith and you have A.J. Brown, the check down game is so essential. Why? I, as a coordinator, am not going to give up the plus 25 play because why? They have two plus 25 guys who are capable of getting it at any moment on the field. What do you create? Space. You create underneath. That's exactly what Fangio is going to have to fight this year. Why? Because he plays that control and contain. Guys are going to complete passes. Why can't that be Jalen too? Yeah, because you're right. you know what? Look, I've got those two guys on the outside numbers. Dude, my underneath game has to be open because I have to defend those guys. Right. That's so true. That, that that's that's really beautifully said. It, you can't you can't frame it up any better than that. That's that's the reason for why this could be so lethally good. You know, because because remember, you're not just throwing the you know regular guys either. No, they're, <laughs> they're, 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 they're you got the you got top. some of the best talents in the NFL over you there. Probably you probably know? have the third best. Some argue the second or third best receiver, and maybe the sixth or seventh best receiver in the league. Use them as decoys too in your screen yeah. game. Okay, yeah, and that's Look, where it's, you know that's why adding three gets crazy. can't just be a nothing giveaway. It's got to be competent. That's what I mean by that. By the way, let me slide over this. So Kelsey was on a podcast, and by the way, I'm framing it this way, just so that we know where we were and where we're going. This is not to harp on 23 in any way, Xander. This is to See where we're going here. And first off, you asked a great question the other day. I forget what it was, what the context was, but you went the timing. Must have been a great story. question. <laughs> the timing of the story that came out. What was that one story that the timing you questioned? Yeah, the, the McManus story. John got very upset with me for questioning that timing. Okay. How about this timing? So all of a sudden, Jason Kelsey did a, did a show yesterday. And he was asked point blank what he thought went wrong. He said, well, the two coordinators just did not work. And it wasn't. Nobody really was ever on the same page. And the coordinators, for whatever reason, it just didn't work. Now, Jason Kelsey has a key fob. Now, I'm wondering, wow, somebody obviously wanted this out. Let me, let me continue here and get your take on it all. They was asked another question. He goes, we just didn't have the cohesiveness between coaches and players, the players in the field from 22 to 23. I think they're in a better place right now, just being around the guys. He said this. How about this one? Last year, the offense, instead of becoming more complex, became more simplified. We went from being a really kind of a, an offense that was starting to evolve into something to where all of a sudden we got so simple that it just didn't work and people were figuring us out. And he goes, on the other hand, our defense got more complex. And he said, we were throwing more things out that guys were not understanding what was being asked of them, like Reddick dropping in coverage, what have you, throwing only to the numbers. What a dynamic. To me, it should have been reversed. You should have expanded the offense and simplified the defense yeah. That, in my opinion, was the mistake they made in 23. 
Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, that that would it uh, it does. It sounds backwards. It sounds backwards. And maybe maybe Kelsey's spot on. Maybe that is why you know the team sputtered so late last year so badly. They just couldn't figure it out, and that's part of it. You know, back to the first comment though. It, it does seem like they really want everybody to think that this, the coordinators were the whole problem. Now, now maybe they were. Listen, maybe they were the problem because when, when you lay it out like that from a football guy, it makes sense. You know, and you saw that. That's what you saw. You saw a simplified offense, which didn't work, and you saw a complex defense, which didn't work. So it, that makes sense. But boy, it does seem like they're they're you know they're throwing everything at the at the coordinators and. Those are the only guys out of the room. So they're not going to have Kelsey go up and say, oh, Nick Sirianni didn't lead us properly. He's still in the room. They can't do that. They can't undermine the guy they kept. So I'm not saying that it was Nick. I think it makes sense that it was the coordinators, but, you know, I don't want to be I don't want to be naive to that. The Eagles are obviously good with those narratives, not not so much the other way. Not they, They're not going to put it on Jalen. They're not going to put it on Nick. They're not going to put it on Howie, you know. There's two guys that got fired. Sure. It was all their fault. I mean, look, I think it was their fault. I'm just saying you don't want to, you know, you don't want to be too jaded one way or the other. That's that you could view that as a jaded point of view. Well, I told you the other day when that ESP put that out, Nick Sirianni's having a great camp and then followed up with a Howard Eskin tweet. Now you've got Jason Kelsey out there mentioning everybody sucked at the coordinator position, but the head coach and the head coach was never mentioned in that um, interview whatsoever it, be, it to me it looks like the eagles wanted out that hey nick wasn't really responsible for this and it was other folks or at least they want to give that impression that nick was not responsible for this um and you know how this can all go away xander if vic fangio and kellen moore have a great year and nick is the ceo i hate to say this to you dude but kellen moore will not be here as a coach next year but nick Sirianni will they're not going to let a guy who brings a team to two NFC championships. No, you're game right. Yeah, they, and, and why would playoffs, they? Why would they? They're not going to fire him. <clears throat> no, they're not. They're not. No, you're right. I mean, look, that's the fear, right? Is that is that you get into this and Kellen Moore works so good, it's almost too good, <laughs> and he's hired away. But that's the NFL. So I think you know Jalen. Also, you know that's that was one comment that Jalen made that I didn't like, where he's like, "Oh, it's too much of a revolving door," and I'm like, "Listen." That's life when you're a good team. And that's life in Philly. If you want stability, then suck every year. I guarantee you nobody will will hire your coaches away. You know, you'll get fired every three years. But other than that, if you're a great team and you have great coordinators that are innovative and are are pushing the game forward, they're going to get hired. So unless you have a setup like Andy Reid where you lose Biennemi and it doesn't really matter, or you have a Kyle Shanahan, you're gonna have you're gonna have people moving in and out. So hopefully Jalen knows that and he can get ahead of it. Look, this is a great offense. This works for me. This is great. And then and then the next coordinator that comes in, it's not just like, hey, do whatever you want and I'll listen. It's this is what works for me. This is what made me a good quarterback. This is what helped me read a defense. This is what I thought we should have done more of. And then you can kind of have that cohesiveness with a new coordinator. I know it's a new guy and he's got to call the plays, but you know, you got to create some sort of, there has to be a common denominator that's here, right? If it's not going to be the coordinator, it's going to be the quarterback. Yeah. So he needs to take more control. And I think you're seeing a Jalen that understands that. And that's why he's been so, you know, the way he's been, that's why he said the things he said, you know, maybe the whole 95% comment, maybe that was premeditated by hurts. I'm going to reset these expectations. I'm going to reset everything and I'm building this up my way, you know, and, and, and I think Kellen's doing a good job helping him, but I think he knows that. And, and, that, and that might be what you see this year. You got a couple more comments. Yeah, I got a couple more minutes for sure. All right. Let me, let me throw this at you here. Tell me I'm freaking out of my mind with this take on Kelsey. Just tell me I'm out of my mind. Um, Brandon Graham says this, that, Jalen Hurts is more comfortable this year. He improved the view of his life better. He sees the team. He's grabbed control of the team more. And he just seems more comfortable this year than any time since he's been in Philadelphia. 
Do you think that's because Kelsey's no longer on that football team? You know what Kelsey also said about himself? He said that I played poorly at any time in my career in the last five games of the year, and it was the worst five-game stretch of my career that I had was last year, and he did not play well. And by the way, that's when the most hits on the quarterback and the blitzes came was at the end of the season. Maybe Jalen was seeing something different that – Kelsey was seeing, and those guys were just not on the same page. So my question to you would be, and again, not a rip on Jason, but is it possible that Jalen now feels for the first time this is his football team? Uh, the, I don't think a possible is the right word. I think it's 100% real. I mean, how could you not? That's That's just human element, right? I mean, this is – you have Kelsey. You come in. Kelsey's a molded center. You're, there's no, you're not and helping leader. him become a guy. He's the leader. He's the guy that, that, that had the parade speech in the mummer's outfit. He is Philly, you know, and, and, and as a quarterback who comes in and becomes the face of the franchise, you have to mesh into that versus you're the maker of your clay where you can mold like Cam Jurgens, Jalen Hurts is going to have an impact on the way he becomes the center of this team. He can't do that with Jason Kelsey. Jason Kelsey is in his ways. He's going to snap the ball the way Kelsey snaps the ball. He's going to be the center. He's going to call the protections the way he wants to. Now, you take that. Again, I don't view it as a knock on Kelsey. I just view it as a real part of the game where Jalen is now opened up, like you said, not only as a leader, but as a football <clears throat> player. I can put my stamp on this team more so now than I ever could have in the past with a guy like Kelsey, who was the unspoken leader of the offense. And I think it's a great point. I don't think it's a knock on Kelsey. No, no, I no. Think it's a real, yeah, I think it's a real, real it's thing. It's a passing of the baton. Exactly. And I think that matters. And, and that's where I, you know, I also, I think Kelsey sees it too. I think Kelsey's smart enough to see that where I'm great and I'm loved and I'm revered here, but it's also time for me to let the, let this young man shine, you know, and let him take over this football team because that's what's best for him. That's what's best for the team. And I think he, Kelsey could view it that way too. So I don't want people to think we're knocking Jason. No, I don't think we're knocking not. Jason up. I think you bring up a really good point. I think, you know, part of the comments of Jalen looks better, more comfortable here. They must go into that. This finally feels like it's his football team and nobody else's. It's him. He you shared know? it. He shared, he shared it. With, it. Exactly. He shared it with uh, Fletcher Cox. He shared it with Graham. He shared it with Kelsey. He shared it with uh, everyone. And now, the football team is his, dude. I, I think mean, namely Kelsey's the number one guy there, though. Yeah. Just because of the, the and, and not a rip. And not it, a rip. It, exactly. It's not a rip. It's it's now he's the leader. He's the guy. And he's the architect of this team fully. You know, and I, I view that as a good thing. I, I think that's a good I think overall, that's what you want. When you when you I mean we just talked about Tom Brady a little bit ago, and, and I hate to compare anybody to Tom Brady, but was anybody telling Tom Brady? How to conduct business? No. You know, they were all, he got to Tampa Bay and everybody said, Brady, you say jump, I'll say how high. You know, that was, that was the, the aura that Brady had. You want Jalen to build that. You know, that's a confidence thing. I want that's Brady a, to be in that. I, I mean, I want Hurts to be like when you, it's a great point. And I, you know, anytime people, they go so far over the other edge. When you make a comparison to Tom Brady, you're not talking about Tom Brady. What you're talking about is the blueprint to Tom Brady. Okay? Just because you yeah, have a no, blueprint right, yeah. you're not comparing doesn't players, mean you're going to execute it the same way, but that blueprint will show you how to get down the yellow brick road. That's what that blueprint is. You know, Xander, there's a game plan to everything in life. You just don't wing it. Yeah. Okay? And listen, if I Brady mean, walked up to the line and, and, and he saw something different than the center, I guarantee you Tom Brady was trusting his gut over the centers. I don't care who they were. <laughs> Absolutely. So I think Jalen almost feels freedom in a way, you know, where I can go with what I see. I can try. I don't have to be not second guess, but when you hear it from Jason, it's like, I can't go against Jason, you know? And by the way, this is uh, you know, I would dispute this as this isn't what we're saying at all. JK says too much knowledge and leadership is never the problem. I don't believe that we're saying that's the problem at all. I just think we're pointing out a shift yeah. that's happened with the team this year where Jalen is now taking the reins. Jalen is the undisputed leader. Not that he wasn't in the past, but as Sill said, 
you can't overcome the shadow of Jason Kelsey. No. You just can't. The guy stood at the at the Rocky Steps in a mummer's outfit and paraded us on our first Super Bowl. Jay, ring. How you about this? How about Xander? If there's a problem on the team and we have a losing streak, I'm not looking at Jalen. I'm looking at Kelsey. Now I'm looking at Jalen. Yeah. I also, okay. I wonder, that's a good point, by the way, last year. Everybody's like, where was the leadership? Where was Kelsey? Where was Lane? Where was Brandon Graham? You know why Kelsey wasn't a leader last year? Because he wasn't playing well at the end. Yeah, and he knew it. He and knew he it. knew it. And that's Hey, I'm going to tell you this. When Jason Kelsey knows he's not playing well, how many other people went down that same rabbit hole with him? Yeah, it's true. I think that's hey, part of the biggest reason why he hung him up, probably. He knew his time was passed. Three players here I want to ask you, then we'll get out of here. Of the new players, first-year players, what do you think the impact Quinion Mitchell makes this year? When you say first year, are you saying rookies? or Guys, you... well, No. Anybody okay. who's a first-year player this year. Oh, yeah. Okay. Quinion Mitchell, I think, has a big impact. I think he plays 17 games. I think he is – How many starts? I said nine. Starts on the outside – Starts, starts. Not, I think he has nine yeah. starts. He I think plays he all games, that. though. I'm gonna go twelve. I think. I think it's. I think it's higher. I think it might even be thirteen if you if you get him in every start after the bye week. Uh, but we'll see. I think his impact is great in that the Eagles figure out real quick that they have the cor the cornerback of the future that you're building on. I know. I love Keely Ringo. I love Cooper DeGene. I love all these other guys too. Don't get me wrong. He's going to be your leader on, of that of that defensive backfield in the future, and I think he's going to show that this year and solidify it, and that will change the way the Eagles build their football team, knowing you have your cornerback of the future. Makaya Becton, his impact. Let me let me let me tell you what I first, and then let me get yours. I think he's going to play seventeen games, and I think he's going to be a Pro Bowler. Wow, at guard, at guard. Okay, can and I ask you to be project? one of the highest and most sought after free agents at the end of the year in the NFL? Okay, uh, can I ask you to project a little bit further then? Will he take a deal as a tackle somewhere else? Will he look to get top guard money and fit? Remember, guards are making no, 20 no. million. No, here. Guards okay, are making 20 question. million now, Big Sills. No, it's 20. I get it. Here, yeah. here, here's what he shows you, though, that he's a traditional tackle who can play inside if you need. And now you become somebody like a Jason Peters on the Eagles where this could be an impact. I'm not saying he's Jason Peters. I am not mm -hmm. saying that. I am saying, though, that when you have a guy like that come onto your team that you can plug in and have Pro Bowl play at guard and tackle, and then you could be the heir apparent to Lane, how would you structure that? You would have to structure a deal where you were paying him on, a, on an elevated scale where maybe you gave him 15, then 20, and then when Lane's out, you give him up to 25 million. And you do one of those Howie Roseman bag of monies at the front end, keep the money low. And because I'm telling you, Xander, he'll have 85% of the league after him if he goes 17 games this year and he plays. If he just plays at that right, right guard is the least thing on the offensive line. Yeah. And if he plays 17, he's going to make the Pro Bowl. And he, for his size, dude, he could go in the open market $25 million. Here's the thing, though. I don't think it works as well the way you laid it out where you're a tackle and you have inside ability. I think if you're an inside player and you can play tackle, that's valuable. But if you think about it. Never played guard. I, and But that's my point. If, if he's going to be a tackle, he's going to be a tackle. Listen, look across the league. Trent Williams, Lane Johnson, Panay Sewell, uh, Jordan Mailata, all the great tackles. You don't ever see them play guard. In fact, if they I don't move see them a lot to the of inside, teams with Jordan Mailata and Lane if Johnson, you, on if them. you see if you see Jordan Mailata on the inside of our line, we have Wait, some serious, serious. How many issues. offensive lines do you have Jordan Mailata, Lane Johnson playing tackle on in the league? Forty ers don't even have that. No, that's true. That's true. I'm just saying the best – if you're talking about him like an all-pro player as a tackle, a team is going to sign him to be a tackle. If he's an all-pro guard, I think the Eagles could think about lock, locking him up long-term as a guard and giving him $20 bucks. I'm moving him. When Lane leaves, I'm moving him to right tackle. 
Yeah, but that's where you're going to get into the situation of, of a bidding war where another team is ready to make him a tackle and pay him more money right away. Because, look, I, I don't – the Lane Bills. is Lane is definitely on the back half of his career. He's but got I don't probably see Lane. two and a half years left. I think he's got three, and that means three seasons. Yeah. So you're not going. What are you going to keep Makai Becton until he's 28 years old? You know, on a on a reduced salary, just waiting for Lane. You can you can draft a guy in the first round and develop him as quick as that in three years to be Lane's replacement, and he's 24 or 25. So that's my issue with that. Is I think it's it's guard or bust for him in Philly. And if it's not guard, or if, if he does what you said and, and he moves on, you know, that's when you, you look at your guys like Trevor Keegan. Yep. You know, you revisit the Tyler Steen conversation, and, and you kind of let that guy walk. I, so, think he, but, I think if you want, Xander, Keegan can play that right guard spot next year. I do too. And, and that's where I think they'll probably balance whether they do want to give him that type of contract, that guard, you know, or you let him walk. But I, I have a, I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing the long-term vision with him you know, kicking him out the tackle because I, I think Lane's got some time left, you know, and I think the Eagles are going to prioritize those draft picks, you know, and, and we'll see. So, but, you know, back to your point on this year, what his impact is in is this year. I think he's your starting guard this year, all the way through. Xander, what's McMullen's fascination with Gainwell? He's Quez walking to, <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. I think Gainwell does have some upside to him. I think he's a good player. I don't think he's been utilized properly. Um, in the previous offenses, I would look for Kellen Moore to understand his skill set very well and utilize it. Um, McMullen just says he looks really good, man. I don't think – McMullen is – see, people think McMullen picks players and, and guys he loves and hates. No, McMullen I don't think is almost either. too objective for his own good. If, if, if Kenny Gamewell looks like shit, McMullen will tell you right away. He's impressed John through camp, and that's his fascination with him right now. I don't think it goes anything deeper than that, though, Surgical. Well, the only thing I'll say is uh, Bryce. I mean, um, Bryce McMullen. Though I don't know, he kind of likes that. He kind of likes that guy a lot. Last yeah. one here for you. Well, you got to wait for Bryce. To, look, if Bryce sucks in the games, it's time. But you know, you're, you're not going to write off a guy for 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 a couple practices. Not here. writing anything off. Okay, well, that's where John's coming from. Is my point. Last last guy, Trotter Jr. I think he starts. How many games. does he start a game this year? Yeah. Yep. I think he does because if if the linebackers, if A, it's not because of talent alone, I think it'll be because of injury. I think he's already shown that he's right there in that third, fourth spot at linebacker. You know, if you have Devin White and Nicobe Dean, let's just say they're the top two right now. And then Oren Burks and Jeremiah Trotter. I think, or not Oren Burks, um, Zach Bond and Trotter. I think Trotter overtakes Bond pretty quickly because he's the instinctive real linebacker. Remember, but Zach Bond's he's how old? He's never been in he's never been an off-ball linebacker ever no. in his career. Are we trying to reinvent the wheel with this guy? No, he's, or he's just not an off-ball linebacker. No. Exactly. So, I think he's going to kind of fade into oblivion a little bit more and I think you'll see Trotter get up there. I think he plays a game this year for sure. I, th I would say he starts 6 to 8 games this year. Mr. PFF, no, man. You're Mr. D-I-C-K. Who are you kidding there, Princey? That's what he calls McMullen, Mr. PFF. <laughs> I'm telling you, Prince and McMullen were like in a heavyweight oh, bout. Man, this I, like I was just Prince. a mediator. I'm, I'm bringing up hey. the Prince comments. McMullen's <laughs> clapping back. He's hitting them with the stop it, the signature stop it. It was great stuff. It was great. Hey, it was a great show this morning. I do love Prince here today. Xander, good stuff, man. I mean, really great stuff. I mean, hey, I'll tell you what. I think we're going to learn a little bit more about the team. I think you're going to see a little bit more of the defensive guys because I think Vic wants to see what he has. I don't think you'll see any of the offensive guys tomorrow, but I do think you're going to see some of the defensive guys. Maybe you're going to see less limited role because, man, you feel comfortable just rolling them out September 6th and saying, let's go. I don't, but, man, it's the new NFL, isn't it? I mean, I look, you're I'm right. with you where I'm like, right. oh, you know, you can't just come in rusty, you know, but – you know, it's the new NFL. I'm not, they're not going to listen to me and do it and do what I say. So my opinion on that is basically irrelevant. I, I think the Eagles are, look, you want to go that route. That's fine. You better come out ready. You better come out with a win, right? I mean, so that's what we could say about that. Well, the last two years, you can't deny the fact that they did get out. Big sales. Yo. No, no, you're right. You're right. Big sales.
I'm going to be over here. I'm, I've been studying recipes. I've been working on my cooking. I got the crow made for big sills. I'm salting it. I'm peppering it. I got some Cajun sauce on top. When Jalen Hurts throws for 4,500 this year, I'm going to come on this show with a fat cigar, a, a, a fedora hat, and I'm going to be ready to rumble big sills because Kellen Moore might be the best thing to ever happen. Remember what I say to you, folks. Get ready for the gumbo because you're going to be out. eating gumbo. <laughs> we'll see, you're going to be Bill. eating gumbo with a stick. We will see, Big okay, Sell. I'm promising you, Xander, great stuff. Hey, guys, where are we on the like list right now? Because I really appreciate You guys have been killing it. 236, brother. 236. Very nice job, guys, here on a Wednesday midweek. Very good stuff. 4,500 yards. Kiss my ass. 4,500 yards. Tomorrow morning, Birds 365. Xander, I appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. Appreciate yourselves. Appreciate everybody in the chat. Thank you, guys. Love all you guys. You guys are the best. Uh, thanks for the likes, the comments, the subscribes, and the support. We appreciate you. Big sales. I'll catch you tomorrow, brother. You got it, guys. Appreciate it so much. Don't forget to check out my guy, Xander Kraus. We're going to take a small time out. Hit the like button. Keep it here, National Football Show. Michael Vick at BetUS.com. Catch an incredible 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits plus 10% gambler's insurance. BetUS, my online sports book and casino. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.